invite San Juan, the next speaker, who is going to tell us about user-friendly interface that he has developed to make it possible to analyze data from Scope MS and Scope 2 experiments within the Perseus platform that many of you might be familiar as being uh, a software uh, suit, uh, software and software platform that allows you to visualize and analyze um, mass spec data analyzed by MaxQuant. Okay, hello everybody. Could you, could you hear me? Yeah. My name is Song Huang Yu. Um, I'm from Cox Groups, and then today I will tell you the newly developed methods in MaxQuant and Perseus. And then basically, the purpose of this new developed method is for supporting single cell proteomics data. So in my talk, I will introduce this method and also show you how to use MaxQuant and Perseus to analyze single cell proteomics data step by step. And uh, I also want to echo just Nikolai's and then Greg said about um, the like golden uh, rule. Actually, this is also, we also have no golden rule for using MaxQuant and Perseus. So everything is based on your data set and your, your purpose of your analysis. So I just show you the direction and the basic analysis for it. So actually we provide all these tools and then you can select which one you want to use. So I think previous talk already gave us very, very good introductions about single cell proteomics data uh, experimental settings. So I won't repeat this again, but basically we will get raw data from the experiment, and then we can load this data into MaxQuant. And then we develop two novel methods, which is isobaric match between run and the PSN level weighted ratio normalizations for, for the analysis of single cell proteomics data. I will show you later. And after running MaxQuant, we will get a bunch of output table, and then we can load protein group tables into Perseus, which is a widely used platform for multi-omics data analysis. Includes a lot of tools of statistics and visualizations. So uh, in order to support single cell study, we also create several uh, plugins that you can annotate the isobaric labeling data easily. You can modify the channels, remove the channel without sample or something like this. You can filter out the raw quality of samples or protein groups. And then also we integrate many different imputation methods and then also dimensionality reduction methods. And then in order to remove batch effect, we also integrate several different uh, pro, um, like normalization methods in protein group level. Okay, before I tell you the methods, I want to show you the data set I used. The first data set is like previous talk already show you. This data set, oh no, sorry, the second. This one is another one, sorry. This one is from uh, Bogdan, actually. Um, this data set composed of seven different samples from mouse brain. But in these cell types, uh, sorry, in these data, data sets, we have no reference channels. But it contains more cell types that we can test our dimensionality reduction method. And then the second one is, we just talked about this, um, it's composed of human macrophage and monocytes. It contains normalization uh, channels, so we can use this to test our normalization method. So the first method in MaxQuant is isobaric match between run. So in this figure, you can see there are two different experimental runs. But in MS1 levels, they look exactly the same. But if we go deeply to see MS2 levels, in green square, you can see the identification signal is not very clear. But on the blue square, we can see a sharp and clear signal. So we can do identifications based on these, uh, these features. So if we, uh, luckily we have barcode. So based on barcode, we can easily to do match between run. Then we can increase the identified peptides for the quantifications. So we apply these methods to these two data sets and you can see after we apply this uh, match between run, isobaric match between run, these two data sets roughly can increase 70% to 100%. So in, in the data set of my brand, we increase 102%. For the uh, human macrophage and the monocyte data sets, we increase 74%. Okay, and the other method is uh, MS PSN level weighted ratio normalizations. 
Um, basically, there are also some methods which can do the normalizations, but most of them is working on protein group level. But we all know TNT labeling actually is based on peptide level. So if we can create a method which can normalize the data in peptide level, it might be a benefit for the data analysis. So all we did is we get a ratio to the reference channels and then weighted by the median of iron intensity with a power of exponent value. And then this exponent value can be trained, can be optimized to fit your data set. So in order to get the optimized exponent values, we just set the exponent values little, uh, increase this value little by little. So you can see this, uh, in, based on this figure, you can see when we assign the exponent value to 0 0.6, the variance of protein groups is the lowest. So that means when we assign 0 0.6 to our methods, we can get the best result. Of course, all these parameters can be trained by yourself to get the best result to fit your data set. But for this uh, presentation, I will use 0 0.6 to show the data. Okay, so now we use 0 0.6 as our exponent value so we can do the uh, normalizations. And you can see without using normalizations, the um, red point and the blue point actually is roughly mixed together. That means we cannot really separate macrophage and the monocytes. But after we applied uh, PSM normalization, you start can see a, bo a border of these two clusters. So that means that data can be classified. And how about the other methods which working on protein group level? Is that work or not? So we choose another two methods, which is widely used, Lima and then Combat, which can also do the normalization on protein group level. Actually, you see these figures. They work also very well. And then we come to another idea. How about we combine them together? Because actually, PSN level and protein group level are two different levels. Might be there are some battery effect exists in PSN level, and then some battery effect exists in protein group level. So if we combine them together, what happens? So we combine the PSN level normalization and then lima. PSN normalizations and combat. The results still work very well. So based on these figures, we it's not easy to see which method is best. So we go deeply to check the variance. So we can see after we check the variance of protein groups, if we combine protein group level normalization and PSA normalizations, this performance is the best, slightly better than just using one normalization. So basically, based on this result, we might see the, some batch effect which is, exists in protein group level some exist in peptide level. So this is just the directions. You can also choose just one to use normalization or both of them. All these uh, features can be used in process. Okay, we also know that in single cell proteomics data contain a lot of missing values. So a good imputation method might help the data analysis. So what we did is we tried to use different imputation methods and to compare them to find which one is the optimized one. So uh, what we did is we, we calculated correlation coefficients of the samples within the same cell types. They should look similar. And then also we calculated the correlation coefficient of whole populations. And then we simply uh, uh, normalize this. Normalize this is based on the A divided B so that we can get a ratio. So if the ratio is higher, that means that the, the imputation method works better. Okay, so in, in this comparison, you can see Pressure's default imputations by normal distributions works slightly better than, than the other uh, methods, but just slightly better. So basically, I think this also based on your data set. You can choose which one you want to use. And an interesting paper published in this year in the Nature Biotechnology. Uh, this study is they trying to compare different dimensionality reduction methods to uh, single cell transcriptomics data. And then in these papers, uh, the statement they say is PCA is not able to find a cluster, but TSNI and then UMAP can find a clear uh, clustering. But UMAP seems work better than TSNI. So for example, you can see there's a green uh, cluster is CD8 T cell. In TSNI, we can see actually the clear two cluster there, okay? 
but in UMAP, they work better, they close much more closer. So this is for transcriptomic data. How about proteomics data? So we use this, we did the same things for transcriptomics data. And then for the data set one, I will present to you uh, this, this data set with seven different cell, uh, samples. And you can see in PCA, similar, we can not really see a very clear clustering. But in TSNI and the UMAP works quite well. But UMAP seems work slightly better than TSNI. For example, you can see the uh, hippocampus in TSNI, they are separated to two clusters. But in UMAP, they are very close as a one cluster. And then this phenomenon is not able to see in the data set two because they only have two cell types. So it's easy to separate it. So if you have more cell types in your data set, we will recommend you to use UMAP. Okay, now it's all the diff, uh, novel methods I've just introduced to you. Um, now I want to show you how to do the analysis via uh, MaxQuant and Persis. But before we do this, we need to download the tool for sure. So MaxQuant and Persis, you can easily download based on this URL. And then if you want to run some package this, or a plugin that we integrated into Persis, maybe this plugin is, how can I say, is original provided by R package or Python package, then you need to download this Persos R and Persos Pi in order to run this package. And then if you want to create a plugin by yourself, you can program in, you want to use some R package or Python package or something else you want to create, you can download the Persos plugin and then do the coding by yourself and then integrate it into Persos. It's quite flexible. You can achieve the purpose that you want to do. Okay, let's go to the uh, examples. For the MaxQuant, uh, now everything I show you is not in the current vi uh, version of MaxQuant Persis. We will release this soon because we almost finished our study. We are writing a manuscript, so it will come in soon. So I just show you the uh, screenshot. Hopefully, when you got the new versions, then you know how to use it. Okay, first of all, we need to load the raw data. So easily you just click the load and then navigate to your raw data. And then all the data will list in this interface. But the different thing is, there's another new column show is reference channels. So you can uh, select the data and then select the set reference channel. And you can assign which channel index you want to use as the reference channels. So in our case, channels two is the normalized, normalization channels. So we use two as our uh, reference channel index. Okay, and afterward, we come to the uh, group specific parameters. You can go to tabs, uh, to, sorry, types. And then there is the types, how can I say, uh, options that you can select. So basically we select reporter I and MS2. And then there's a lot of text appear like uh, iTrack or TMT, Aplex, Templex, 11plex. You just click this and then all this information will show automatically. So in our case, we use 11plex, so we just click TMT 11plex. And then we can also select which normalization we want to use. So if you want to use the PSM weighted ratio normalizations, you just select the weighted ratio to reference channels. Then we will do the weighted ratio normalizations. Of course, you also can change the weight, change the exponent value. So you go to the MISC, there is the isobaric weight exponent. Then you can, you can assign which number you want to use. So in our case, it's 0 0.6, so we assign 0 0.6. Okay. Of course, we need to um, specify the FASTA file for mapping. So you can go to global parameter, there's the sequence, and upload your FASTA file. And then you go to the identifications to switch on match protein run. As long as you switch on match protein run, and also you select the reporter I and MS2, then it will automatically to do isobaric match protein run. So right now, everything is done. Of course, you also can add some tables, like Gray just said, MS search, MS2 search, or something like these tables. And then you can press start. And then we'll start to run in the mapping and then searching. Uh, the intensity. Okay, 
After running at uh, max one, we will get output table. Then we can come to process. Very easy, we click these icons, just uh, left, and then you can, there was a uh, windows pop out, and then you can navigate to your protein group tables. And then all the information, all the columns will show in left block. And then you can select which column you want to put into the matrix, and then put into the right block. And then press, press OK, and then you can see the matrix will show in your screen. OK, um, you can also remove some re unreliable group protein groups, like only identify by size, reverse, or contaminant. So you can just select this and remove it one by one. And then we have a new uh, plugin here. Let's annotate the channels. You can annotate the channels from a file. Uh, if, you, if previously we have no this uh, plugin, so you need to annotate the channels one by one and manually. So if you have hundreds of channels, you need to do 100 times. It's time consuming. So now it's easy. So you just need to uh, open your editor or Excel, and then put the experiments channels, and then any kinds of annotation we want to put. So basically, experiments and the channels are required. So in here, you can see there is the expo uh, experiments columns, okay? And then all these experiment name should be matched to the Max Quang name that you set. For example, here, there is a PF94AA. And then in Max Quang, in your settings, there is also a pf 94 aa So if you set this correctly, then Persos will know how to match the annotation to the data. And then there's also the channels. The channel is one base, so you can start from 1 to 11, 1 to 8. Just uh, depends on which plex you used. And then also there's the samples that you can put here, or other information you want to put, you can add this behind. If you add another trend, uh, columns, it will appear another um, category row here. Okay. The most important thing is when you save this data, please remember to um, use the consistent delimiter. So if you ex use Excel, you can save it as uh, .csv files, .tsv files, or .txt file. No matter what you saved, use a consistent delimiter. And then you can assign the delimiter like you used here like tab, or common, or a semicolons. OK. Then you will see the annotations just appear here. And then we can remove some channels that we, want to, we don't want to use. For example, some like reference channels, like carrier channel, we won't use this through a data analysis. So basically, you also can go to the isobaric labeling text. And there's a remove channel. You just select it. And then you can change the any um, groups or category rows here. So in our, ex our case, we use samples. So we can remove the carrier channels, we can remove reference channel, we can remove the control channel. So after doing this, you can see only the channels with cell type, uh, sorry, with sim uh, single cell will exist in this uh, matrix. And then we can do the log reasons. Easily just go to the basic, there is a con uh, transform, and then you can log reasons your data. Afterwards, we can remove the low quality sample or putting groups. There is a field row and field columns. You can field rows by the uh, valid value, also you can field columns based on valid values. And then you can set numbers or percentage. In our case, we select percentage and use 70% as a cutoff. So that means in a row or protein groups, if these protein groups contain more than 70% of value value, then we will uh, keep it. Otherwise, we'll remove it. And then you can select which condition you want to use. At least one uh, group pass these conditions, pass this cutoff, we, just, we will keep it. Or you want to use all groups need to pass this uh, criteria, you can say this by yourself. And then for the row data, uh, sorry, for the uh, columns, filter is similar. But here we set 40%. Okay, now we have a high quality tables. Now we can do the imputations. There's a um, 
tag here called imputations. You can click this, and then there are several different methods. We recommend to use the personalized default that's based on the normal distribution. It's easy to use. You just select this, oh, sorry, click this, and then this window pop out, and then you click OK. Then we will automatically impute. Uh, also, if you want to use something uh, different imputation methods, you also can select here. There's a uh, replacing missing values based on the input LCMD is one uh, R package. And then you can run this, choose which, which method that you, want to, you want to use, and then use it to impute your data. OK, afterward, we can standardize our data by z-score. So you just go to the normalizations. There's the z-score, and then there's window uh, pop out, and then you can select columns. That means we do the z-score based on the samples. OK, and then finally, we can remove the batch effects based on the protein group level. Because in PSN level, it's already done in MaxQuant. So now, for the protein group level, we can do it in process. So you go to isoberry labeling, there's a remove batch effect protein groups. And then you can select the method that you want to use, lima or combat. And then which batch, which category row is the batch. So in our, ex our case, it's experiments. So we say experiment is the batch. And then click, click OK, then we'll do the uh, list normalizations. OK, actually, after doing these steps, you, we already got the final tables. So you can do any kind of statistic test you want. You can do the differential expressions or anything else. I just show you one case. It's the uh, dimensionality reduction analysis. So there are three different methods. I just showed you before, PCA, TSNI, and UMAP. You all can use the impersonals. You can go here to select PCA, click this, and then easily press OK, and then you got a PCA plot. Or you can go to here, there's a clustering, and there's a TSNI analysis or UMAP analysis. If you click one of them, we will see another um, Windows pop out and with a lot of parameters that you can play around. And then click OK, then you will show, there will another matrix, matrix will show. It's like component one, component two. If you select more component, it will show here as well. And all the category row will become a category columns. And then you can select uh, the row that you, you like the, the column you want to do for the scatter plot here. You can click these icons, and then you can choose which column you want to plot in scatter plot. So for example, this one is UMAP. So you can generate the figures by yourself. OK, basically, all this is the basic um, steps for the data analysis. Of course, you can do anything you want. You can play around with different tools to apply different tools, test different tools, compare different tools. All the tools already in Perseus. OK, just simply sound it up. MaxQuant and Perseus provide platforms for single cell proteomics data analysis. For the MaxQuant, we have isobaric match protein run, which can increase the quantifications around 70% to 100% in single cell database, data set. And then PSN level weighted ratio normalizations can remove the battery effect on PSN level. And in Persos, you can annotate isobaric uh, channels at once. And also, you can remove the channel that you don't, you don't want to use. And then there are different imputation methods and the dimensionality reduction methods you can use and then compare. Uh, in our um, experience, if you have more uh, cell types, UMAP might perform better than the other dimensionality reduction methods. And then uh, we recommend to use PSN level and then protein group level normalization together to get the best result. Okay, in the end, I want to thank all uh, Cox groups. It's very good groups that we can work together and then to do such great job. And I also want to thank the Nikolai's group to provide such wonderful data, and also Bogdan provide such wonderful data. And thank you for your intentions. Thank you. I can see there are questions. Hi. Thank you. Great talk. Um, so you show us that uh, in some sense you can impute the data to remove the empty values in a given detection PSM. Mm -hmm. um, in a given example, hypothetically speaking, you have s uh, a capacity for each run six single cells. Let's say that three cells, you know, you imputed a treatment and three cells you didn't 
for whatever reason. Um, in the one that you imputed the treatment, then that signal disappears because of the treatment. So how does the imputation take care of that? Because that's a biological identification that remove those three channels and then you have the other three left that were not treated. So how does that incorporate? Okay. I think that's that quite, sense? quite tricky. So um, I would say because uh, you have different uh, purpose for the treatment and then control. So basically if there's a one missing, um, might be currently for the persons is not able to handle it currently. Yeah, but um, I think we can, we can, I can think about this, how to solve these problems, but currently might be not able to solve it quite currently, yeah. Hi, um, where you're using the exponent for PSM weighted normalization, um, where is that applied in the max quant pipeline? Is that near the end? Um, is it easy to see where you could do a partial analysis because your data suggested that that might take quite a few uh, runs through your data to actually determine what the optimum value is. So um, is that something applied near the end? So that can be fairly rapid or? I didn't really get your question. You means the exponent value, why we put it in the max one? Um, it's it's at what at what step is that PSM weighted normalization applied in the max quant workflow? Mm -hmm. um, because if we're going to have to change that setting, if it's applied right at the beginning, then I'm going to have to do a whole max quant. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. It's it's afterward. Okay. So basically, we we already got the peptide intensity, and then use this to uh, get the ratios, and then weights, and then exponents. So after, always is after this. Yeah. Great talk. Um, I have a question about the isobaric matching. Um, there's some power there that could really um, help improve some experiments. So a couple questions. Uh, first one is, what channels of data are you using? Are you using both the MS1 and MS2 channel in order to attempt to match? Because you will have some MS2 data. So you're using both? Yes. OK, so you're using both. Um, has anyone attempted? to use this in a way so that you could run, say, one set of samples with a very low collision energy so that it doesn't really um, cause very many uh, reporter channels to um, report out in high variance. But there, what we're looking for is the IDs. Mm -hmm. And then take those IDs and then run your real samples with far higher collision energies so that you have those um, far better CVs and much larger reporter ions. Has anyone attempted that? What does that look like? And if anyone here wants to try it, please do, and then uh, write me and tell me how it goes. <laughs> we didn't try this, but I think it might be work. I don't know. We need to try this. Quite interesting, yeah. Uh, I have two questions and a comment. The first one is also to the isobaric uh, MBR feature you mentioned. So you basically, uh, I didn't hear clearly about the, uh, the uh, above question. So basically, you may use MS1, MRZ, and isotope ratios as well as uh, MS2 reporter ion ratios, or uh, just the uh, ions uh, to the to the right for identification. So so y so you mentioned you you use both of them. Yeah. So basically, you if you check the MS1 level, sometimes there are some um, MS1 level is not quite like not like this, they are not sharp, but actually we can still find the corresponding ones in another round. So that we can do the maturing round in MS1 levels. But somehow in this is not another case, is we can see the identity, uh, uh, sorry, identity, Iten I intensity, sorry. <laughs> and but in the MS2 levels, there's no sharp identification signal here, but we have barcode. So we can do isobaric match between run MS2 levels. So there are different things. So I, I didn't mm, know very clearly. So, so, so do you mean you use the correlation between the uh, reporter ions in the live, live, uh, in the live figure to, uh, and matches the reporter ions to the right figure? No, no, actually is, for example, in the lab, right-hand side, 
um, this one, this peptide, won't be counted as a uh, identifier peptides. Mm -hmm. But basically, based on this match between round, then this one can be counted. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's not like a core, it's not anything related to correlation coefficients. Just we can increase the number of quantifications. So it can help to, to get more uh, valid values. So missing value might be able to replace. OK, uh, yeah. I didn't get much. <laughs> Maybe we can discuss later. Because yeah, sure. I, I, I learned from mm, Slavov group as their DART ID paper, as they, they simply use a retention time and refine a uh, very delicate model to get better, uh, also better correlation. Uh, and the second question is, in, in the Perseus platform, mm, is there any features uh, such as the uh, XML editor uh, you, we can use in MaxQuant so we can easily modify some, um, some parameter without using our mouse and keyboard many times to do some grid search? Mm -hmm. you, you, you know what I'm meaning, uh, my mean. Um, maybe um, is, is there any similar feature such as MaxQuant XML parameters set? Uh, basically, uh, if I un my understanding is right, basically Persis is also a GUID interface. You can see everything can you click, can you easily to play yes. around the parameters. I think it's almost the same as MaxQuant. So everything that's I mean, the interface and then the in interactive interface is always the same. Yes, the so problem is, to play is around if it. we have, uh, I have 10 data set, for example. So I have to do the similar mouse clicks for 10 times. Um, is there not, any way to automate Not really, it? not really. Depends on which uh, plugin you used. So we're currently trying to simplify all the, how can I say, the procedures to do the data analysis. So for example, like what I say showed here is annotate from the files. So previously, all you need to annotate is we really like what you say. If you have 100 channels, you need to do 100 times. But right now, you just need to create a file by yourself. You can easily to use Excel, copy paste, and then draw all the columns, and then you can get the files. And then you just load the files into press, uh, process, and process do it once automatically. So you don't want to need you don't need to do any annual uh, assignment anymore, but of course there are some features we still in the process to to get it better. Yeah. So if you have any suggestions, we always welcome to contact us. We can easily to inter in, um, integrate this in our process. Okay. Um, my last comment is for the part of optimization and coefficient, uh, coefficient of variation. Mm, I have a comment that I don't think the lower CV, the result is better. You mean this mm, one? Or basically, this one? in single cell experiment, we may would like to see some variation between the same type of cells. So basically, mm, if you are doing control, you, you, uh, you dilute from bulk, and you label with different TMT, you should uh, see as low CV as you want. But for real single cell experiment, I don't think so. And that's my comment. Uh, I partially agree with what you said, um, because in our investigations, we really, think, we really see that the, in the bulk cells, the variance is lower than single cell. This is for sure. But of course, we also think that not all the proteins will express differently, uh, totally different or significant difference. Of course, they have some variance, but if they are the same protein groups, their performance still should be much similar compared to the others. This is our thought. Yeah, so that's why we use variance to, to compare this mm, exactly. weight. Exactly, yeah. especially when we are doing DDA and, mm, and identifying and quantifying the most abundant proteins. Yeah. Thank you, that's a great talk. Um, I had a question about the match between runs. It's um, a useful feature and I've used it. I was curious, so if you have multiple sets of data and you're matching features from one to the other, 
but you do have a MS2 that's not, for some reason, providing a good BNY ion series, and then you're inferring that those tags actually came from the peptide um, versus a, a contaminant in your isolation or something bad was happening just when you sampled. Um, what benchmarking have you done to say that that's actually reliable tag intensities? We are checking like MS2 tables to see if there are anything wrong or just looks weird. But until now, we didn't see something bad. Of course, we also set some cutoff, which is like if they are completely just a little bit match, we won't consider this as a, as a identified peptide for sure. So basically, we, we're trying to see, but it's n we still have no like tables or something to show you. But roughly, we, we believe that is OK. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.